As a garage gym owner, your training can be impacted by the colder weather, such as not wanting to grab a colder equipment or not knowing how to keep yourself warm. Well, probably my favorite option to do to any garage, but probably one of the more expensive options is finishing your garage. This is putting sheetrock and insulating back behind the sheetrock. The reason why this is such a great option is because it creates a vapor barrier from the outside of the garage to the inside. And what this can do is it can increase your temperature inside the garage from 10 to 12 degrees from the outside temperature. But on a day that it was only 34 degrees outside, I was able to get this up to about 48 degrees, even without heating it at all. While there is another great option that you can do, and let's go over to the garage door so I can show you this as well. An option that you could do is insulate your garage door, and this can help reduce the heat loss that you have if you were gonna put heat into this space. Because an already finished garage, on average, you probably see about a 70% heat loss if you do not have an insulated garage door already. So that's why I recommend doing this, but I haven't done this for the reason that I would have some gaps alongside my garage door and I would have to deal with the association if I really wanted to change this, which it's probably just a pain in my butt to do, which it's fine for the way it is right now. There are some temporary options that we can do, but I'll provide those later in the video. And if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any more future videos on helping your garage gym. When you take off your shoes, your feet are gonna hit the floor. And that's why I'd recommend, if you haven't done already, covering your concrete floors. The reason is concrete has a high thermal mass, meaning it's gonna hold on to that colder temperature much longer than a rubber flooring would. Rubber has is very non-porous, so it doesn't let gas or liquid seep through. And yes, it is gonna be in contact with that concrete, making it less more colder, but this isn't gonna be as cold if it was bare concrete. So that's why I recommend having good flooring, but a budget option is a stall mat, which I highly recommend as well. One of the things up above my head here is a garage heater or a heater of some sort. But there are some things you need to consider before you go out and buy a, any kind of heater. You need to know what size your space is, such as your square feet, and also your ceiling height. This will help you determine your BTUs, which will help determine which heater you actually need. And also you need to consider what your budget is. How much money are you looking to spend on a heater outside of the equipment you already have in the space? There are different types of heaters out there. There are infrared and forced air. For an infrared heater, it's just gonna heat the objects. So the air really isn't gonna get warm unless you leave it on for about two hours, then you might see the air actually warm. So it's gonna heat the objects such as yourself and like a barbell. So I would recommend putting the barbell in front of an infrared if you do go this route, where a forced air is gonna push hot air into the space. And that's why you see a lot of larger spaces, like such as a gym that you go to, they're a forced air heater or a duct type of heater too. And it is also going to heat the objects, but not as quickly as a infrared heater would. There are different ways you can fuel these heaters, such as natural gas, propane, or also electric. And with the natural gas or most type of gas heaters that are hung from the ceiling, they may require an exhaust coming out of the roof. So you just have to make sure you check the manual and if you need to have a professional come out and do it, if you don't feel comfortable doing it, then you'll have to have that as well. But the reason why so many people go with a natural gas over an electric heater is because natural gas or gas in general is much hotter than electric, making like a three car garage much easier and efficient to heat than using electric. But sometimes we don't have that option to pipe gas into our space. So the next option is electric. When you look at electric, there are two types of outlets that you are gonna probably be considering, a 110 volt and a 240 volt. A 110 is your standard outlet in your house and a 240 volt might be a special request to put in your garage, but I will tell you it's probably worth it to do so, what I have in my garage here. And one of the highly recommended infrared heaters out there is a Dr. Infrared. There are plenty of good reviews out there, and I would recommend this one. And just remember, it's an, inf it's an infrared, so it's just gonna heat the objects and not the space. So it might feel colder, but the objects are gonna be warm, and you're also gonna be warm by that thing. Think about it as like when you're sitting at a hockey arena, those are infrared heaters that are above you, not forced air. And some heaters won't be as efficient. Yeah, they might be a 1500 watt heater, but they are not as efficient as other heaters are. That's why it is very good to look at reviews before you go out and buy those heaters. Those of us that are lucky to have a 240 volt outlet, I would highly recommend the Dino Glow from Menards. 
It is very inexpensive to do, and I've had no complaints of using it. It heats up the space within 30 minutes. Like when I was in January, it was probably around 30 degrees inside the garage, and I heated it up to about 50 degrees easily within 30 to 45 minutes. Just before I work out, I would go turn it on. I don't leave this heater on throughout the day. I only turn it on when I need it. So I'll just pull the truck out and then I'll turn it back on. There is no complaints with how long it takes to warm up the space and feel comfortable to work out in. With the Dynaglo as well, you can also connect a thermostat to this and control it by that as well. If you do have a space where you don't park your car in, you could leave your heater on as much as you need to and set it to a temperature that's much easier to increase when you wanna work out. When I originally started this garage gym, I was stuck with space heaters because I didn't have that big outlet. I came to consider that my time was more worth it, so that's why I went with the 240. But when you don't have that option, I highly recommend having two space heaters, but this will require two separate breakers because what these things do pull is about 12.5 amps and your outlets are rated for about 15 amps. So they're pulling a high amount of amperage. I'll put on the right side here, the testing of a single space heater compared to having a dual space heater during the week when it was about 23 degrees to 30 degrees, just so you can see the temperature increases when you have a dual space heater option that's on a standard outlet. There again, make sure you have dual breakers. So you have an outlet that's on a separate breaker than another outlet with the other space heater plugged in that's on another breaker just to prevent the breakers from popping. And if you do have the money, I would highly recommend doing a mini split. This is gonna be another option for those summer months. If you wanna feel cool in your space, you can do an AC and it's also heated. And you also can connect this to an app to control the temperature in the space. There are some temporary options you can do inside your garage to help retain some of that heat. One of those being the plastic sheeting. This is a temporary option because of the fact you do need that vapor barrier from the outside of the house to the inside. Because if you don't have this vapor barrier, what's gonna happen on the backside of that plastic sheeting is you're gonna build up moisture and that would expose some of the lumber to moisture, which could cause mold in the future. So that's why it is a temporary option. And another thing with that plastic sheeting, say if you have a third car stalls that you wanna heat with some um, space heaters, you could section this off from the other spaces and make it like a separate third car if you don't have a partition wall in between the two car stall to the three car third stall. But I would highly recommend if you don't have your ceilings finished, just putting that at the ceiling for a temporary thing. And once the winter is done, taking that down because of that whole moisture thing again, this would just help that heat from rising. So it keeps the space a little bit warmer than if you had the ceilings exposed. There are some things you don't wanna forget, such as clothing, having some good athletic pants, or even considering tights. Tights or leggings, yeah, you could say this are more of a women type of thing, but having tights is actually great for compression and holding some of that body temperature in. So that's why I would consider looking in some, some good pairs. And like virus, they're pretty thick, so they're pretty easy to retain some of that heat. Um, so that's another option there as well. Not sponsored, just a great pair that I love wearing. Another thing I've been wearing during the whole video about, so about 25 minutes of filming is this sweet sweat. It's supposed to be for an ab toning thing, like an ass scene on TV. But it, I, I saw this on another YouTuber, Dylan Johnson, and I thought it was a really interesting idea to help keep your mid a little bit warmer. Because you think about it, all your blood's gonna flow down to your legs through your abdomen. So if you're able to use like a compression or you could also use some compression shirts to help retain some of that heat. Just putting my hand back in between, I can already feel that there is some heat retained. There are football hand warmers out there. So those little sleeves that go around your waist, you see a lot of punters and quarterbacks wear. This can be quick and easy to put your hands in between sets if you are looking just to keep your hands warm as well. In the winter months, it takes me a lot longer to warm up just because of my body is at a colder temperature from the outside. But my most efficient way to warm up is using resistance bands and creating activation to help increase blood flow to those areas I'm looking to work, such as doing like a hip opener or also working on opening those lats and pushing that blood flow to those areas. After I've kind of done some activation, I'll stun the biker or the assault bike for three to five minutes just at a steady pace and it'll help me get some sweat rolling and then I'll know that I'm kind of ready to go into more of a positional work 
that's one of the things I highly recommend is just sitting on the bike for three to five minutes to just help with getting that sweat moving and making that blood just flow. While having a warmer garage gym is enjoyable for any workout, you do need to have good flooring. So here's a video on how to lay flooring and also the budget option I would pick.